Hello, and welcome to the magic and chemistry behind psychedelic mushrooms. My name is Danny St. Germain, and I'm an organic chemist working in the forensic chemistry department at Cayman Chemical located in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Cayman Chemical has an extensive catalog of research standards and is an ISO accredited provider of analytical reference materials. Our forensics division is a team of talented scientists dedicated to making research possible for our colleagues in forensics, toxicology, academia, and testing labs. My current area of focus is the synthesis of tryptamine, tropane, and opioid reference materials. Today, we will be discussing the magic and chemistry behind psychedelic mushrooms, as well as considerations for handling testing materials. Tryptamine alkaloids are responsible for the magic behind most psychedelic mushrooms. Tryptamines contain the scaffold of an indole with an ethylamine bridge located at the 3 position. Humans generate our own endogenous tryptamine analog called 5-hydroxytryptamine for the 5-hydroxy group located on the indole, which is also known as serotonin. Serotonin is the feel-good molecule and is responsible for modulating mood, cognition, memory, and learning reward behaviors. The two main tryptamines of interest in psychedelic mushrooms are psilocybin and psilocin. Both are agonists at the serotonin HT2A receptor, which is thought to be responsible for the psychedelic effects of these mushrooms. Psilocybin contains the um, tryptamine scaffold with a dimethylamine substituent at the amine and a phosphonate ester at the 4 position. Psilocin is the dephosphorylated analog of psilocybin and has a uh, hydroxy group located at the 4 position of the indole. These tryptamines can be found in the family of gild mushrooms known as agaricales. While psilocybin containing species are primarily found in the genus Psilocybe, they are also found in other genus such as Paneolus, Enocybe, Foliotina, and others. Tryptamine alkaloids in psychedelic mushrooms are synthesized from the amino acid L-tryptophan, located here with the tryptamine scaffold and a carboxylic acid alpha to the nitrogen. L-tryptophan undergoes decarboxylation, hydroxylation, and phosphorylation to form the first intermediate uh, norbeocystin. It then undergoes methylation to form baocystin, and a second methylation to form psilocybin. A third methylation can occur to form aeruginacin, and aeruginacin was originally identified only in the genus Enocybe, but was recently identified in Psilocybe cubensis. It has been shown that psilocin is not a uh, biosynthetic intermediate in this pathway, but is an enzymatic dephosphorylation product of psilocybin. This is one of the reasons handling magic mushrooms can be so challenging. When handling fresh mushrooms, if they are damaged, they will begin to turn blue. This is the result of the 4-hydroxytryptamines uh, oxidizing, specifically psilocin. Once dephosphorylated, 4 hydroxy 4-hydroxytryptamines can form intramolecular hydrogen bonds, otherwise known as IHBs. These IHBs act to deprotonate the phenolic uh, substituent on these tryptamines, which initiates oxidation in the presence of light and oxygen. As you can see, this is the autooxidation of psilocin. At zero minutes, it's a clear white uh, solution, and as time goes on, over 24 hours, it degrades to form this darker color. These IHBs cause 4-hydroxytryptamines to uh, oxidize faster than their 5-hydroxytryptamine counterparts because these can't, the 5-hydroxys can't swing around to form those IHBs as 4-hydroxy um, analogs can. Now the degree of substitution on the amino group also contributes to the rate of oxidation. Monomethyl substituted norcylosin and 4-hydroxytryptamine um, oxidize 20 to 25 times faster than the dimethyl substituted psilocin in controlled oxidation experiments. And the faster these compounds oxidize, the lower the yields will be when the mushrooms are extracted. These oxidation products are difficult to isolate because they rapidly form polymers over time. 
Lentz et al. was able to demonstrate that cellulose informs highly colored oligomers by inhibiting additional polymerization using a methyl group at the 7 and the 5 position of cellulose. After subjecting 5 and 7 methyl cellulose to accelerated oxidation studies, they were able to isolate several dimers and oxidation products. They compared their UV spectra to uh, samples of cellulose that had oxidized and found that this 7-7 coupled dimer appears to be the main contributing dimer to the bluing of injured mushrooms. Researchers postulate that these oxidation products form as a natural defense against insects and other predators. These oxidation products are also the main reason that there are challenges with storing, extracting, and analyzing fungi alkaloids. To overcome these challenges in the past, mushrooms have been dried and extracted with acetic acid or alcoholic solvents. Psilocin and psilocybin are readily soluble in acetic acid, but acetic acid is not selective for only these compounds. Phosphatase can follow and dephosphorylate psilocybin to psilocin, lowering psilocybin yields. Heating exposure during extraction also does the same. While not as soluble in alcohol, pure organic solvents give the highest yields and require less workup. However, the time required to complete the extraction can take up to 24 hours. These results only tackle psilocin and psilocybin, but as we saw from the biosynthesis, there are other alkaloids of interest to target as well. The most recent paper from Gottvaldova et al. sought to find optimal storage and handling conditions for the highest yield of alkaloids from fresh dried fungi. The highest yields overall were achieved using acidified methanol with a 0.5% volume to volume concentration of acetic acid. They were able to demonstrate that dried mushrooms had the most enriched yield of alkaloids, and, except for psilocin, which was found in higher abundance in fresh mushrooms. They also found that fresh mushrooms are best stored in cool but not cold temperatures because freezing significantly lowered the alcohol content of fresh mushrooms. The best yields came from powdered dried mushrooms, whereas the opposite was observed in chopped fresh mushrooms, which makes sense due to the oxidation upon injury to fresh mushrooms. While dried material is more stable, heat does degrade the alkaloid content, and dried powder does also degrade over time, um, even at the most optimal cool dark temperature conditions. In healthy mushrooms, phosphatases release psilocin in response to injury. Once the threat is gone, kinases rephosphorylate any remaining psilocin to the more stable precursor psilocybin. But in the absence of mushroom matrix and these enzymes, how do these alkaloids fare individually? Internal studies from our lab show that psilocybin is quite robust and is stable in a number of solvents at room temperature over several days. We formulated psilocybin in a one-to-one -one acetonitrile water mixture for solubility and treated the mix with ammonium mass-state buffer, dilute hydrochloric acid, and dilute sodium hydroxide base, and allowed them to sit over seven days. We tested the purity on a helic HPLC method, and we found a very minimal amount of degradation in dilute basic solution. So we made the sample 10 times more basic and found that the psilocybin had degraded to 50% its original purity. For this reason, we do not recommend strongly basic conditions for psilocybin analysis. However, the psilocybin was stable in the one-to-one -one acetonitrile water and methanol um, solvents over several days and was quite stable as well in uh, dilute acid. Psilocin, on the other hand, is far more sensitive. According to the literature cited below, the stability of psilocin depends on the solvent, the pH of solution, and exposure to light and air. The rate of oxidation is fastest in water and decreases in alcohols with longer aliphatic chains. In aqueous solutions, a slower oxidation rate is observed at a pH range of 3.4 to 5. Here we see increased and accelerated oxidation as the pH increases and becomes more basic. Degradation also accelerates in the presence of light and air in dilute aqueous solutions. Here we see the uh, prescribed peak of psilocin and multiple peaks forming upon exposure. We performed our own psilocin stability study, monitoring purity on a Poroshell C18 column. We formulated psilocin in methanol, acetonitrile, and a 1 to 1 acetonitrile water solution. We observed that the stability of uh, psilocin acetonitrile 
uh, was maintained, and we saw a modest degradation in methanol. However, we saw a marked de degradation of 38% in the 1 to 1 acetonitrile water mixture. We treated a 1 to 1 acetonitrile water solution with hydrochloric acid and saw a minimal amount of degradation of 1.5%. When we treated the 1 to 1 uh, solution with ammonium acetate buffer, pH 5 to 6, we saw a, a degradation of 10%. And when we treated it with sodium hydroxide, we saw rapid degradation with the initial reading at 74%. And by day 3, 100% degradation was observed. We also conducted a light study by leaving silos and dissolved in clear vials exposed to light by an external window. The solution remained stable in acetonitrile, and we saw the same um, degradation in methanol with light exposure as to no light exposure. Based on these observations, we recommend storing your solution in acetonitrile. Based on the literature and our own internal studies, we recommend that for silosin, you minimize light and air exposure to your solids. You store your solids under inert gas, cold, in amber vials. Uh, we also recommend that you prepare solutions fresh in amber vials to minimize light exposure. Acetonitrile is the recommended solvent for a minimal degradation over seven days. Acidic solutions can provide stability in water and organic solutions. And avoid neutral to basic aqueous solutions because they do degrade your silosin. When it comes to psilocybin, as a good practice, prepare solutions in amber vials to minimize light exposure. Prepare solutions in acetonitrile and water for solubility and for minimal degradation over seven days. Again, avoid basic solutions. Slightly basic aqueous solutions can cause minimal degradation, while strongly basic aqueous solutions cause significant degradation. And try to avoid heat exposure if you can. A note about our certified reference materials. We do guarantee stability of our CRMs under proper storage conditions. Once the ampule has been opened, however, due to the considerations just described, we recommend confirming your handling procedures are maintaining integrity of your CRM standards. Thank you all for attending our webinar. I'd also like to extend a special thank you to our analytical services department, especially Natalia Correa, for the great work she did on our stability studies. If you're interested in more information, uh, scan here to visit our psychedelic resource page or follow us on Twitter at Cayman underscore forensic, Facebook or LinkedIn. If you'd like to sign up to receive email notifications on new NPS standards, new tools and new publications, visit www.caymanchem.com forward slash register. And thank you again.